These are the best affordable Rolex watches money can buy. So let's get right into it. Just because something is cheap doesn't necessarily mean that it's worthwhile. When I talk about affordable, I mean they're worth ultimately putting your money into because these are watches that are timeless, that are extremely versatile, very robust, and ultimately, I think they can get the job done in any collection. And so what we have today is a selection of six watches that I feel are some of the absolute best Rolex watches money can buy. Starting first with this watch right here, it's the Reference 14270 Rolex Explorer 1. It has a slightly more classic case size in 36 millimeters, but it has a perfect aesthetic. It's a time only watch that's super legible given the Explorer 369 dial. And ultimately, it's a watch that really can do absolutely anything as it's extremely robust at 100 meters water resistance. The watch itself features a very clean and very legible black dial. Again, in 36 millimeters, I think it's really a perfect size as a kind of casual or even semi-formal kind of Rolex watch on a metal bracelet makes it extremely practical. And one thing to note about these older reference Rolexes is the versatility that these provide. You can ultimately change out this bracelet, put it on a leather strap, or even put it on potentially a perforated rubber strap and completely change the look of the watch. And so what this gives you really is an unlimited combination of choices, especially since this aesthetic is so clean and classy that it really will go with just about any strap you choose to put on it. So overall, these watches can be had pre-owned for about the $7,000 price point. Any Rolex under the $10,000 price point is certainly a great value, but especially for something like this that is extremely versatile, at the end of the day, because it's a time-only watch that you can just wind set and wear, this is really perfect as a do anything, go anywhere kind of watch. Next up is my absolute favorite model line from Rolex, and that is the GMT Master line. I feel that Rolex has really perfected the GMT complication and has created a design that is not only timeless, but extremely functional and distinct and really the best GMT on the market. I really can't think of a better travel watch for the price. And so today I wanna to present you two GMT alternatives that I think are absolutely great and very undervalued in the current market. And they are, for example, these pre-ceramic GMTs, uh, the reference 16710, and of course the reference 16753. The reference 16710 here sports a Pepsi style bezel. You can get it also in an all black bezel or also in a Coke bezel, all of which I think are absolutely amazing watches. And the great thing is, is the functionality of it, it having of course a GMT complication, but also the versatility. At the end of the day, you can pop out the bezel, swap it out with, for example, a black bezel if you have a Pepsi or a Coke bezel, and the same with the other three, and also swap out the bracelet. These are what are known as holes case Rolexes, which means there's actually holes on the side of the case, which allows it to be extremely easy to pop off the bracelet and pop on potentially a leather strap. So again, this is a watch that you really have an infinite number of style combinations with, which is something that simply modern Rolexes and modern GMT masters just can't provide. Another thing that I absolutely love about these vintage or neo vintage GMTs are their extremely slim profile, which actually wear a lot slimmer than the modern GMTs. I also love this one right here. It's the 16753 Rolex GMT Master 2, better known as the Rupier. This kind of two-tone bezel with kind of the brown and gold, along with that almost auburn-like dial, is just an absolutely stunning combination. And again, these are ones that are super underrated, especially considering where the modern Rupiers trade at. And I feel that there is a charm to these that is really lost on the modern GMT Master II references, in particular the Rupier. In terms of price, a 16710 in steel, again, depending on the year, depending of course on the contents, you can get approximately in the 12 to $15,000 range. Whereas a rupier like this, again, probably around the same thing, about the 12 to $15,000 range, depending on the year contents and the condition. When you think about it, I think these are just amazing watches overall. You get a super functional complication in an aesthetic that is super versatile that you can change up on the fly and super easily. And ultimately you get a watch that is a timeless classic. These are never going to go out of style. The next watch is from one that I feel is the most quirky and distinct model line from Rolex, and that is the Rolex Milgauss. The modern Milgauss references have a number of stylistic characteristics that distinguish them, such as, of course, a very quirky and distinct lightning bolt hand, and not to mention that GV glass. Now, one thing to note is that Rolex patents almost everything that they do, but they never patented the GV glass 
for the actual Milgauss line, which is very surprising. But I think it's just a testament to how difficult it must be to actually create that GV glass, that they say that if somebody else can do it, then go right ahead. Overall, I really like the Milgauss model line because of its truly unique characteristics and design, but also because it is a super functional watch, namely that it's time only and is built for purpose. It was that original tool watch that was meant as something that was amagnetic. Now, while that complication is technically obsolete because modern Rolex watches are fitted with silicon parts, at the end of the day, that history is still ingrained in the Rolex Milgauss model line. And I feel that this one in particular, the Rolex 116400 GV, in particular with that stunning Z blue dial as it's known, is so beautiful. And I think with age, this will turn to a beautiful, almost turquoise style dial that will just age absolutely beautifully. And I think it will truly be one of those future collectible Rolexes over time that people will only appreciate once it's no longer produced. Price-wise, these will vary depending on if you're getting the black GV or the blue GV. The blue you can get around the eleven dollars to $13,000 range depending on the year and contents and condition. I have to say, I think that is a phenomenal value overall considering the distinct design that you're getting and also that rich history of the model line itself and considering the fact that you're getting what I feel truly is a unique watch from Rolex. It's unlike anything else in their catalog and in my opinion, it's really unlike anything else on the market today. Last but certainly not least is a model line that Roman has been singing its praises for for many years and I couldn't agree more with him. It is those Neo Vintage and Vintage Date Aids. The reference 18238s and 18239s, which we have here today. I feel these present themselves as a phenomenal value proposition overall. You're getting an all gold Rolex in a gold case, a gold bracelet with a date date complication and in a model line that is arguably one of Rolex's most iconic for about the 17 to $20,000 price range. When you think about that, that is roughly where modern GMT Master 2s are trading at, namely in the Batman and Pepsi configurations. And at that price, to be honest, I'd almost want an all gold watch instead. Not only is it extremely functional, but it's also super distinct given the presidential bracelet that this watch is on. I love all the different dial variations that you can get, obviously all of which will impact the price, but you can get things such as stick dials, Roman dials, diamond dials, you can get even myriad dials. There are so many different combinations that you can get in the Rolex Dated, particularly in the 18238 and 18239 references. And what makes it awesome is that you can alter it according to your budget and according to your sense of style. And again, at that price point, the $17,000 price point to 20,000 for kind of your more muted designs and 20 to 25,000 depending on the dial that it comes with and if it has a factory diamond setting, I think you really can go wrong, especially when you consider where modern Rolex watches are ultimately trading at today. These being, in my opinion, a lot more rare and a lot more valuable just because they're an all gold watch on a gold bracelet. Another thing to note about these vintage day dates is their size. These are 36 millimeters, which is technically a more classic size, but if somebody like Tony Soprano or James Gandolfini could rock a Rolex day date, frankly, I'm sure that everybody else can pretty much pull it off. And not to mention the fact that size trends for watches are actually declining. People are gravitating more towards the 40 mil case sizes and below, again, whereas previously they used to be 42 plus. Personally, I'm all for the smaller case size trend. I do feel that 38 to 40 millimeters generally is that sweet spot, but I wouldn't neglect these 36 millimeter case size watches because ultimately these wear a little bit bigger than their size actually describes them to be. And at the end of the day, these are timeless icons that will continue to endure for many years and will truly outlive us. So guys, these are what I believe to be the best approachable Rolex watches for really any collection, be it somebody who's just getting into the hobby or somebody who has a strong watch collection of 10 plus watches. I think these are all versatile, all have their unique characteristics and all represent a great value in the modern watch market. At the end of the day, I think that these older model Rolexes and even for example, these current production Milgausses all represent a great value overall that are truly unique and truly add a lot of character to any watch collection. Guys, let me know down in the comments what you feel are some of the most approachable and best affordable type Rolex watches to add to any collection. And of course, guys, 
please let me know down in the comments what videos you'd like to see in the future. My name is Marco, and guys, I'll see you in the next one.